It's been a wild, wild ride of just cutting these pieces of metal. This is historic right here. We now have over 800 shingles. Woo, very sexy. By the way, Jess doesn't get to do any painting unless she helps with the uh, sanding. Aww. I'm excited about this part. They could be like deadly shurikens. And I'm dead. Hey, what's up y'all? This is Jessica. You're watching the Green Dream Project. I live off grid with my husband in Southern Arizona and we are building our own earth bag home. It's been a long process and a lot of work. And right now we are in the midst of making our own shingles out of some used materials. I'm really excited about this part of the build. I think it's gonna be a really unique addition to the house. It's gonna look so cool, uh, but there's more work to be done. So we gotta get to it. Jess has been doing an awesome job getting these things drawn out. We're really cooking now. Probably got over 600 of the shingles down and ready to go. Just 200 more. It uh, still sounds like a lot, but honestly, after cutting about 600, eh, 200 more ain't that bad. Actually, you cut out the first 100 or so, eh? How was that? How was that for you? Well, it definitely takes a while. I don't mind this too much. I, I think it's kind of cool what we're doing, so it's kind of fun. Even though it's also a little tedious. I think you're kind of cool. Yeah, and yeah. tedious. A little bit. <laughs> Crew. Crew, what you doing? Jess, you ready to get on out of here? All right, we got some adventuring to do. Ah, good to be here. Yeah. Hi, Jess. Hey. Hey, it's so great to see you in person. <laughs> Fantastic. Wow, and of course you've got the crew who seems to be pretty yes. quiet and behaving okay. I know that breed, I was gonna get one. So I know that their their whole job in life is, I'll protect my family and the area, <laughs> and I will make a judgment about who I think is comfortable yes. and who's not. Knowing that I try to present with this animal, I won't go to him. He'll need to smell me, assess me. I may pass the test, I may not. <laughs> and also the fact that I'm male can yeah. be a problem it's as also, well. Yeah. And even though I don't consider myself an aggressive dude, <laughs> the dog may not decide that. Yeah, so it's so great to have you guys here. All right, uh, we are here. We're visiting one of our neighbors, Don from Affordable Desert Living. He's been gracious enough to let us come over. I got a few questions about his setup, so it'd be cool getting to visit with him and just kind of finding out the way he does things around here. Well, I'll show you around then, Jim. So, uh, so uh, this is my favorite part of the property. Um, this uh, brings in no end to wildlife. And uh, I've, I've, had, I've had bobcat, javelina, mule deer, and I don't know, probably 40 species of birds. I'm just guessing. How cool was it that we got to uh, meet one of our neighbors, Don from Affordable Desert Living? I kind of had some questions about his setup, and he was very obliging, letting us come in there and give us a little tour, ask him a couple questions about his setup. Don is a very nice, very sweet individual, living out on his own in the desert, making it work on a budget. I know how that is. It's always kind of cool to see how people solve problems in their own individual way. You know, I think that's the great thing about this lifestyle. It's a lot of problems, but it gives you that opportunity to solve them in your own particular creative way. Don's really knowledgeable about birds. So it was cool seeing what he's doing out there with the wild birds. Did they give you any ideas? Yes. So many thanks to Don for letting us come out there and trips around his property, stomping around, asking him questions. I know it's tough. Uh, people live in this lifestyle. They tend to like a little privacy, but it was cool that he let us out there. And so many thanks. This one's being particularly challenging. Could be because my knuckle's bleeding. Oh. <laughs> it just feels like it is. Got it. And I'm 
death. <laughs> this is another day of uh, cutting. What are we up to? What's the final total? 700. Means we probably need almost another 100. But I'm out of material. That was the last of the material we had. So we're going to need a little bit more. But I think that's pretty good. 800 shingles and we didn't have to spend any money on it. That's not bad, huh? We'll need to spend a little bit of money on the last 100. But now that I'm done with the shingles, just got to take crew for a walk. And then finish the dishes and then I can go to bed. <laughs> But we're almost there. Last 100 to go. Well, we are just about to head off. Unfortunately, we're going to need to pick up some supplies in order to keep going forward. We got over 700 of those shingles cut, but we're going to need a little bit more flashing to finish this off. I originally got some of those pop rivets to uh, to, do, to complete this uh, thing, but obviously I'm going to need quite a bit more pop rivets. So I'm going to need to get flashing, some pop rivets, and then I think we can move on with this project. We'll get on to the next phase real soon. How are you doing this? He's not even... Oh, there you go. He's got the bone again. He's still distracted. His nails are getting really long. This is always a mission impossible. I don't want a crew dog with long nails, though. That's why peanut butter is magic. Peanut butter is magic. <laughs> are you going to be able to get them all? His nails are so like big and tough. Oh, <laughs> he's fine with the clippers. He didn't trust that. What this? You're like, uh-uh. Uh-oh, someone's getting a paw cure. Wait, how would you say that? Pot-a-cure. Pot-a-cure? <laughs> someone's getting a pot-a-cure. Right, nope. we're done. We're done. All right. <laughs> more tomorrow. So uh, your mom moved down here fairly recently, but she's getting herself situated. And she's been working down in the, the farmer's market on uh, Saturdays in Bisbee for uh, a while now. Yep, and she is a jewelry artist. She makes handmade jewelry. That's cool that she's doing that. You know how it is with retirement and the retirement nowadays with prices are the way they are, you gotta make a few extra bucks somehow. I think that's a really good avenue. It was cool to go down and visit her. Yeah, so uh, we don't really get down to the farmer's market too much. Uh, so it was nice to get down there. We mainly kind of went for uh, support and to kind of see, see her mom. And uh, we kind of went near the end so we could kind of help her pack up. And you know, it's a little tough for her uh, getting things out there set up and taken down and stuff like that. So if we could kind of help out a little bit, that's always nice. Yeah, we were a little hesitant bringing crew along just knowing how he is well it's dangerous at that bisbee park and the farmer's market because you know when we first pulled up there are a lot of dogs just off leash running around and that could be a problem you know with people he might be a little hesitant but usually he won't like bite a person he might like nip them if he doesn't like 100 percent trust them but a dog he doesn't know and he will neutralize that threat as he sees fit. We had to put the muzzle on him just to be sure there weren't any altercations or problems. Just as a precaution because crew is on a leash so we can keep him from trying to run after other dogs. But we can't keep other dogs from running up to him. He was okay. He was pretty good for the most part. We're very well behaved. There was a dog that got kind of close and he did get a little excited about that but otherwise... Pretty well behaved. Yep. 
All right, y'all, this is it. I am down to less than 100 shingles left to cut. It is crazy. It's been a wild, wild ride of just cutting these pieces of metal. We did have to get a little bit more flashing and we picked up a little extra than we need because we're gonna put it right on the top of the boards as well. We're getting to the home stretch. I'm almost done cutting. Then I got the next task ahead of me. Last one, last one, y'all. Oh, this is historic right here. We now have over 800 shingles. Unfortunately, this is just the beginning though. They still aren't ready to go. We still have a couple more things that we're gonna do and then we'll finally be ready to attach them. But at least they're ready to go. Well, that was tough. It was tough on the hands, just cutting all of them by hand with the shears. That's uh, the price you have to pay. I guess we're trying to save on money, we're paying with time and effort. For sure. Giving the chickens whey protein? No, different kind of protein. So finally I'm done cutting all them shingles. 800, man, that was wild. Well, I think just cut about 100, so I got about 700 of them. That's still no easy feat. And I brought over these bins that we've been using for our cob, and I think that this will be great for the next step. I'm just gonna kinda clean them out a little bit, kinda scrape these ones down. This is the last one left. I think that should be fine for holding the shingles for now. They can get a little dirty. Just try not to get them too dirty. Or this is my idea anyway. I'll check it with check it with the boss, of course. Hey Jess! I wanna know what you think of my idea. So this is my idea. I laid these uh bins down, kind of scraped them off a bit, and I thought I could sand them and put them in these bins. What do you think? You think that'll work? I think it will. Is that clean enough for you, or do you want me to like Really wipe it down and get all the dust out of there. That's probably fine. All right, all right. We got an approval from the boss. Time to get on to that next step, y'all. Wait, stay there. Okay, ready? Kiss. That was good shit. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, on to the next phase. So basically, I'm going to, now that I cut all these things, I'm going to kind of sand them up. A lot of people were talking about the edges, if they're sharp. I mean, yeah, these edges are going to be pretty sharp. So I'm going to kind of sand down these edges a little bit. I'm also going to scuff up the sides of them, just kind of rough it up a little bit. I think this will go pretty quick. That metal is pretty smooth, so we want to rough it up and give the paint something to grip onto so it doesn't just peel off. Very important to get just, just get it to stick. I guess he wanted to be as close to me as possible. Or maybe he likes to be as close to jagged metal as possible, I don't know. Can I get that out of your way? Can I get that out of your way? He likes to chew on barbed wire for fun, so I don't know, maybe it's his thing. Still working on it. Oh, wait, yeah, as long as you're here. Let me show you the new method I devised. So I have my sandpaper, but I was thinking these cinder blocks are so abrasive. It makes a great tool to kind of scuff up these uh, little pieces. I just kind of rub them on the cinder block and it's a great way to scuff up the metal very quickly. 
But uh, once I do that, just go over on the edges with the sandpaper. Makes this process fairly quick and then saves on sandpaper so I don't have to sand the whole thing. So I'm working on the steel shingles right now. A little different from the aluminum because they're a little harder, a little stiffer. So I've been, uh, so I've been kind of taking a slightly different approach to it. I kind of been using the cinder block to kind of smooth out the edges and the corners. And I got to use the sandpaper to kind of rough up the middle. The cinder block is very straight. So any kind of grooves in any of the metal, it's really not going to hit some of those points. So it's good to kind of maybe get a little rough with the cinder block and kind of finish it off with the sandpaper. Da -da -da. Uh, the next phase is painting these. That's how we're going to protect it and keep it from rusting. I'll be doing some painting in between the sanding, but we still got to do all 800, so it's going to take some time. By the way, Jess doesn't get to do any painting unless she helps with the uh, sanding. Well, she doesn't get to do You know what this video needs? It needs cowbell. More cowbell. Well, springtime is usually a pretty windy time of the year here in southern Arizona. Today is no exception. On days like this, I try to do some work inside or if we have to work outside, we have to push through it and maybe keep things kind of weighted down so they don't blow away. But now that it's evening, the wind's starting to die down. But I think we're in for some blustery days ahead. I'll tell you, working on these shingles with the wind as crazy as it's been, uh, it's definitely been a challenge. These things are kind of light, especially the aluminum ones. So I gotta make sure they're uh, held down with the rocks or put down where the wind can't pick it up because uh, these things will go flying. And until I dull them out, they could be like deadly shurikens. Harash! Thought I was ready, but then I was like, then I forgot. What about the night travel gloves? Where do we put those? <laughs> Bring that in the PPE drawer. You got the gloves? <laughs> I got the gloves. They were by the workstation where we're at. So I got the glo some gloves, not the blue nitrile, but I did find the blue nitrile. Now let's do some painting. So I know a lot of people were questioning about the, uh, the tin cans, questioning about rust and everything like that. And this is our plan. The tin cans, the flashing, they're all scuffed up. Well, they're not all scuffed up, but I got a bunch ready to go. So I'll show you what we plan to do next. I'm excited about this part. So a while ago, Jess and I picked up various paints. So uh, we're going to actually paint each of these shingles different colors. I'm kind of excited. Kind of a little bit more earthy tones. We got nutmeg, fossil, heirloom white, ivory silk, and claret wine. All right, Jess, what do you think we should do first? Nutmeg, I guess. A little bit of nutmeg, even though it's not Christmas time yet. So it's another windy day. I've picked a spot where we're kind of blocked by the RV and the uh, Gabion here. Got a board set up here. Let's see how this looks. Jess and I worked together to pick out these colors. Now I'm not the expert painter. Jess is for sure, but Let's have her paint some. I'll paint some, let's have her paint some, and we'll see how these turn out. Uh, let's try the um, ivory silk. Ooh, very sexy. All right, I said, 
No painting for Jess unless she helps with the scraping. But I have every bit of confidence that she's going to jump in and help with the scraping any time now. Although it hasn't happened yet. But we're going to give her some painting time because that's how we just roll here. <laughs> you ready to test out these other colors? Pretty sure they're wondering what colors we're using. So okay. last three colors. Let's check them out. This is heirloom white. Who needs a shake weight? Oh, I like that. I like, that, I like the style. Now let's do the fossil. But not least, you ready? The claret wine. Yes, it is uneven. And after I called you a master painter, too. Oh, oh that's pretty red. Mm. I feel like that did not match. <laughs> I thought it was going to be more brownish. Oh, okay. That's surprising. I guess it's a good thing we're testing them out. Well, let's see how it looks when it dries. Maybe it'll dry a little darker. What's up, y'all? So we're inside the dome right now because basically it's the only spot here where we can kind of get a break from the wind. It's pretty bad today. The winds have just been crazy lately. But meanwhile, we are hard at work on getting all those shingles done. All of them are finally cut. Whew. That was an experience. 800 of them. I'm excited to see it all come together when we put it up around the eaves. I can't wait to start putting it up. I think it's gonna be very cool. What are your thoughts on the colors? I think it's okay. I'm I'm still not sure about that wine color. It's a little more red than I thought it would be. Now, did you have a look at that after it was dried? Did you kind of like compare yes. it to the others? So you're still not sure. It still seems kind of red. Hmm. Okay, we might have to consider that one. Okay, okay. But uh, I might want to try some other colors as well. I'll think about it. It might be kind of nice to have some little kind of bright pops of color mixed in with the earth tones. And what are your guys' thoughts? Like, are you, what do you think about the wine color? Or do you have any other color suggestions that we should be taking into consideration? You know, we're kind of thinking some kind of earthy tones. You know, we got some white, some off white, some browns. Yeah, we we'll definitely want to add, I think, a little bit more pops of color in there. That was the idea behind the kind of I think it was kind of like a reddish brown, but it was ended up being a little heavy on the red. So we're still on the fence on that one. But then we might add a couple more colors. But what do you think? Any other color suggestions? Leave those down below. You just keep rooting us on. You can put some uh, comments down there encouraging us on the whole scraping and getting these shingles done. It'd be much appreciated. Jess, you going to get in there and help me out a yes, little bit? Yes, I will. Yeah, she started it. She started it. So uh, she got the ball rolling uh, and then I kept it going. I kept it going. We got the uh, cut, got to start the scraping. Now we just need to finish it off and then put it up. Oh, I'm so excited. You'll definitely want to stick around because you got to see these go up. I can't wait to see how this looks when it's done. All right, y'all. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye.